Hello everyone, Swaroops here. Well, this tutorial is on uh, formatting placeholders. So this is a kind of a sidetrack from the actual flow of the series because if you recollect uh, in the last couple of tutorials we were dealing with arrays but this tutorial is on placeholders. This was actually a question asked by some guy a lot of time back. I somehow forgot this so I thought I'll make a tutorial on this. So that is the tutorial. How to format placeholders. So if you don't know what a placeholder is, well these are just the percentile S, percentile I and F use in the printf statements. So the percentile S that is for strings, I for integers and F for floating point values. So what this placeholder does is they act as, as the name is to suggest, they act as a placeholder for the value of the corresponding data type. So for example, the percentile i acts as a placeholder for the integer type and similarly for the floating point. So we use this in the printf statements. So when I say printf percentile f and variable 1, uh, the, the value of variable 1 gets substituted in the place of this placeholder. So that is, uh, that's why the name placeholder. But we can format these placeholders uh, in the printf statement uh, which we want to show. So you might have seen something like a percentile 5.3f, 7.1s, something like that. These are formatted placeholders. So with them, the way we display the value, value of the variable onto the screen changes, but the actual value of the variable doesn't change. So let's start with percentile s. So percentile s, uh, it is for strings. So let's start uh, by printing a string, printf percentile f, a percentile s backslash n, and I'll give a string Dennis, as in Dennis Rich, the guy who started C program. So yeah, we have three statements. If I run this, you can see we have three uh, lines, each saying Dennis. Now I will see how to format them. Let's say I give 10 here and 20 here and run this. You see the value they got uh, displaced from the left border. So when I, when I don't say anything, when I don't just simply say percentile s, it gets left justified, left aligned. But when I give a value, say 10s or 20s, it gets shifted by that amount. So 10s shifts the value of Dennis from the left border by 10 places, 10 spaces, if you will. And similarly for 20. So we can use this to print where, wherever we want on the screen instead of just being it uh, left justified. And now, if I make another change in this, say 10.4s. Now we'll see what happens. So you can see the first one and the last one uh, this printed Dennis but the second one it only printed four characters because we specifically asked here for 10.4s so it only printed out four characters. So even though the value uh, we given to print is Dennis, we can cut out, we can chop off the length of the string to to certain extent using this placeholders. So that is how we format the string placeholders. Now we'll see how to do for floating point. For floating, for floating point, let's uh, define a variable. Let's have a variable, uh, say where and make it equal to 10, doesn't matter. And now I'll print it. So percentile f backslash n the new line character and variable. Now I'll just copy this, paste and paste. Now we have three printf statements here. If I run this, you can see it says 10.000, 10 10.00 and 10. Now we'll see how to format this. If I say something like uh, 5.3 here. I'm just commenting that. So if I run this again, you can see the first one was still the same, which we got the last time. And the second one, even though the value is 10, it got it shrunk to just three characters after the decimal point. So, so why did this happen? Well, this is because of the formatting we used. The 5.3 
F we used. The 5 stands for uh, the total number of spaces, total number of uh, places the value should span and the 3 indicates the number of uh, characters, number of digits that should be there after the decimal point. So uh, it says 5.3 that is 3 decimal points after the value so we have we got only 3 zeros after the 10. And now if I change it again uh, to 10.3 uh, it says 10 full places to span and 3 digits after the decimal point. So the remaining has to be filled by something else. So the, by default it gets filled by blank spaces. So you see the total length of this if you see is 10 places and in that 3 will be after the decimal point and remaining uh, will take the number and the spaces. So that is how we format a floating point value. Now we'll go for let's go for integer type now int where again where let's take a big value 10,454 something something some random value now I'm printing it percentile i backslash n and where so copy paste and paste so if we run this we get this as we can expect now we'll format this so for formatting we can say something like 10i 20i and this follows uh, like the string placeholder, string formatting. So it gets shifted, it gets justified by that much, uh, that value. So 10 and 20. Now if I say something like 10.4, let's see what happens. Uh, in this case of string, <coughs> in the case of a string, when I say 10.4, it chops off the string to four characters. But in case of a number, in case of integer, percentile i, it doesn't do that but it just keeps the value the same. So if you see, we, it doesn't change anything. Now if I do a 10.8 here, so the 0.8 here means the total number of, uh, total length of the value. So it has to span eight spaces, but it only has six. So the other two gets appended by zeros. But in the case of floating point, they get added by a blank space in for integers, zeros. So that's the main difference and that is how we format string variables, floating point variables and integer variables to make them display in a way we want. So that's been this tutorial. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and want to see more in the series. Also comment any suggestions, queries, clarifications or any ideas for new tutorials. They will be very helpful. Also you can check out my blog and my Facebook page. I always post tons of interesting and useful stuff there. So check them out too. All the links are in the description below. So that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next tutorial. Until then, goodbye.